This is something that we should use just to keep our hearts up, so those that can see this. You're all familiar, I hope, with Dr. Hans Rosling's way of showing how the world is. So just to give a very brief explanation, on the bottom axis, money per person, rich. Going to the right, you get richer. On the vertical axis, it could be child mortality, life expectancy. It's life expectancy. So these little dots, each is a country. This is UN, UNICEF, World Bank data, UNDP data. We'll start back in 1800. And in 1800, people were at about, the, let's pick the middle here, say $400 GDP per person and a life expectancy of 30 years. So here we are, 30, $400. Dollar a day, 30 year lifespan, 1800. If you go along the 1810, 14, 1820, you'll notice some countries are getting longer lifespans. Perhaps that's introduction of forceps in childbirth, introduction of wash your hands. We see public health changes bring an increase in lifespan, not for those countries. And you'll see the blue are Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. But in the 1950s, 60s, huge changes. 70s, 80s, watch this movement. You'll see AIDS hit in life expectancy. 2007, we have a world in which the country club countries, these OECD countries, there's the US up there, way up here is Japan, over here is Hong Kong. Look at the change. If we watch the pathway for each of these 190 countries, you would see zigs and zags depending on water policy, energy policy. None of that had the benefit of what Anne's describing, this knowledge revolution where a kid in a remote village in Botswana can see an image of a windmill and I can make that, generate power, and suddenly the kid is on the net by knowledge. Books will change their form, knowledge will change their form, and we will see Africa here still down. Sierra Leone is still down at 40 years life expectancy. We're gonna see movement here as knowledge about changing practices alter people's lives. Now, what's really hard? Electrons and cell phones, internet, has a common technical base. There's power here, I can do something with it, I can go anywhere in the world, find the power, and do something with it. Agriculture is different. The reason the Green Revolution had such an impact in China and Asia is because there was uniform practice of agriculture, therefore, introduction of strains of rice could have an immediate impact over a large number of people, not in Africa. One farmer will have 10 crops. There are 17 different fundamental, you can take the savanna growth, the forest growth, the grain growth, the root. If you're a cassava country, you're quite different than a country that's doing something involving fruit. So all of the various forms of agriculture in Africa and the variegation of the map of Africa showing different agricultural and soil characteristics means we don't have an easy answer. The only pathway to change lies in dissemination of knowledge. And when Anne mentioned that you use these cell phones now at UNICEF and throughout the UN community to acquire public health data, let's add to it soil and water data, by seeing we can change things. So there are some brand new technologies that will allow us to change how we understand and by doing that, alter how other people understand. So I'm gonna show you one last thing and then I'm gonna sit down. There are some technologies at base as I've moved from a computer guy into physics, chemistry, and material science, all those things I sort of skipped over when I was in school. Those are the foundations of what I'd assert, and many would assert, certainly all those that pay a lot of attention to this, as the most amazing technological and business transformation of the century, the move to renewable energy. 
driven by this awareness of the impact of climate change on the lives particularly of those in the poorest countries who are at the margin. The drought in Kenya at this moment is killing people. There are people that died last night in the camps northwest of, of Nairobi. No water. Then the cattle die. Well, if you don't have cattle, you get an AK-47 and go over and take the, the Turquets cattle or the Pokots cattle. So the incidence of small arms combined with drought causes violence. We must make a change. So there are a few beginning pathways to providing power to people. What are they? Sun is a good one. Take mirrors, focus them on a pipe, fill it with water, and it makes steam, and the steam generates power. Dig a hole, go to the Rift Valley, the world's best place, sink something down, get the heat, turn it into electricity. These things are solar voltaic, making electrons with, with light, the cells that now, Kenya, of course, has the world's largest amount of solar power per person, but not more or less in aerial terms, very inefficient, cheap solar cells, not very much power coming out of them. There is a way to make the efficiency of these cells multiply by a factor of five to eight. Right now, it works. It doesn't work in large areas yet, but it will. So I'm very optimistic about our thrust toward bringing the combination of electrons and knowledge to change the practice of everyday life throughout all of the world's poorest areas. And at the moment, our first step in all this is to use what we've got, these devices, to acquire data, understand data, act on data, change people's minds with data, be in the mode to broaden the audience, to understand how the world is from this room with a few hundred people, to those tens of millions of people who would act if they knew how. So that's our, that's our charge and that's our challenge. You'll see technologies here today that are making a change. Speaking as someone that's now in this world of venture capital, where the idea is that you take something that makes a, oh, two-time change, not enough. Five-time change, boring. 10-time change, beginning to get interesting. 20 time change now, that's what we'll focus on. And we really won't focus on anything less impactful. We just don't have time. Certainly in the climate change, we do not have time for a simple 2x change. 